Okay, I'm back for part two, and hopefully this time I'll cut down on the chatter and get more work done, um, rather than me just going blah 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 all the time. Okay, so um, I left off with uh, we got our you know footage cropped in, uh, cropped and pre-comped, and um, now we're ready to track. So we want to make sure our uh, layer is selected, uh, the footage that we want to track, and we're going up to our tracker controls and hit track motion. Now we have track motion, stabilized motion, two different, they're similar but different things. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use position. We're going to track the position of our footage. And over here we have um, uh, three different pull down menus. One is motion source, which is the layer that we're going to use. And if there's more than one layer in our uh, composition, you would see more than one you know, choice here. So obviously cut footage is the one we're going to use. Current track, tracker one, that's if we had um, more than one motion tracker, tracker point in there. Um, or is us using more than one track point on our footage. Um, track type, transform, you have your different you know, selections in here, so we use a transform. And it brings up our track point. And we have uh, three parts of the track point here. We have the outside, which is a search region, the inside, which is the um, a feature region, and then we have our actual keyframe marker. And the keyframe marker um, is actually where the anchor point of whatever you parent the uh, the, the the track points to. Um, I'll, I'll show you later. You'll you'll get a better understanding of of it later. Um, but say you want to track a uh, a little black box to your motion tracking. Your black box will actually um, anchor itself to this little point here, wherever it is in the footage. Um, the outside, the uh, feature region is actually the area that looks at the point that you're going to track and the outside area the uh, search region is the actual area um, that the motion tracker is looking for the feature that's just been moved so I'll, yeah, I'll show you guys what, what I'm talking about so let's just move this here and it, actually uh, when I did this uh, before this guy here I'm going to track this guy here Yes, I think that's a guy I tracked before. We'll find out in a second. Um, so you want to grab it. If you get a white arrow, you'll see a white arrow there, white, white cursor. Uh, that means you're only going to move that portion of the motion tracker. So you see, notice the, uh, the uh, um, keyframe marker isn't moving. And the outside box, just moving the, the uh, um, search region, the white cursor arrow. If it's black, that means you're moving the entire thing. Okay, so it's usually somewhere between there, you know, somewhere in here. So let me undo so everything's back to the way it was before. There we go. And so our track, edit, okay, so we got our tracking point again. So I'm going to move this down over the guy's head, and the feature region, I'm going to enlarge it to encompass his head, and I'm going to enlarge it to encompass his body, and that should that should work. Uh, when you're tracking footage, um, the thing you want to look for when you're tracking something, there's there's um, five things you want to look for. Um, the thing they want to track has got to be visible for the entire shot. Um, well, it doesn't have to be visible for the entire shot, um, but you've got to make sure there's several points in that shot where you can track. So if you have a long shot, um, say we have, uh, you know, we're going to track this guy over here. Well, by the end of the, f you know, film or end of the clip, he's already off the screen. So you'd want to, you know, then find another spot over here and track him for the rest of the footage. You you can do that. That that's completely legal. So yeah, I want to make sure I'm at the beginning of the footage when I do this. Uh, the next next thing you want to look for is something that's con contrasting. So like the uh, um, the ninja samurai dude. I don't know what the heck they are. They're dressed up like like ninjas, so I'm going to assume that they're ninjas. But they're wearing their swords like samurai, so I don't know. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Da -da -da -da, what was I saying? Oh, contrasting, yeah. The uh, um, figure here is all dressed all in black, and the stone around him is light gray to white color. Uh, so it's contrasting, and the, the motion tracker will, will be able to see that. Uh, color, uh, if the color is definitely different from the, like you have uh, um, 
uh, a light blue background and the thing you want to track is red um, that'll work um, a distinct shape if something is square um, you know nice hard edges and everything else is round um, you catch what I'm saying uh, and it, at the, out of all those things it has to have a constant shape and color so say you're tracking that little square I was talking about it can't switch from a tr square to a circle and to a triangle it's got to stay a square um, within reason um, the color thing you know it can't move from red to blue to orange to green you know you know what I'm talking about um, so I've got my tracker all set up here well, I just move this around a little bit just to make sure I'm getting everything okay this is the first frame and what I'm going to talk about is the actual um, uh, search region here so it's looking at the uh, the ninja here and uh, what the search region will do is actually look for where he is moving so this is a first frame when he moves the search region is going to say ah okay he's moved over here I'm going to move the entire um, tracking region over here so that's what this search area is so if you have something moving fairly fast like moving from he'd move from here to here you have gotta make sure you have your search region you know a fairly decent size okay so let's go back to the beginning Okay, at this point we have our, uh, our our search region set up, our feature region, our tracking point, and um, what we can do here is I'm just going to these analyze here. It tells you um, how you want to track. So the first, the last one, and the first one analyze frame backwards, analyze frame forward. And it's just basically you analyze tr or track one frame at a time. This is good if you have some a lot of delicate work to do, or it's like really fast video that you're trying to do, um, or if it's fairly simple like this one. This should work because I try. I've done it before. Analyze forward, analyze backwards. This will analyze the entire footage all the way through. Uh, so analyze forward, and it's looking pretty good. He's following them all the way out. There we got him. It popped because uh, the flag got in the way. So if you'll see, the flag got in the way. And it just freaked out. So let's see if I can find another. I think it might have been this guy here that I tracked. I can't remember. So let's let's start again. Let's take this and we'll move it over to this guy here. And let's just move that over there. And we're going to track again and see what happens. Oh, looks a lot better. Oh, kind of. Okay, I'm going to pause and I'm going to go through this because, of course, now when I do it for real, it's going to give me problems. So, um, okay, I'm back and I, I did a little bit of troubleshooting, find, found out what I what I was what I was doing wrong, um, and basically what the what the problem was is that uh, <clears throat> the search region was too large and it was searching for for too much, and uh, I don't know. I'm guessing it saw something similar to you know what was in the feature area and it and it jumped um, so I did is I took the feature area shrunk it down so it was tight along the guy's head and then I you know shrunk down the search area uh, so there wasn't much to search for seeing as how it's going very slow and so it turned out you know it got a really nice track out of it okay so what I showed you beforehand even though it didn't work the first time that's exactly how you're supposed to do it and that's where the time consuming part comes in is <clears throat> going back troubleshooting seeing what you did wrong and then, and then fixing it and so what we're going to do is um, you can actually apply this to your footage or personally what I'd like to do is I like to apply all my tracking data to a null object uh, so in your uh, layer area here right click go to new null object and to rename it, make sure the layer is selected, hit enter, and just name it tracking.